we wrote a piece recently as a bit of a cautionary tale for investors who are trying to consider whether or not to buy, you know, tomorrow's new theme that they discover. Uh, and really, we tried to come up with a really simple framework uh, that investors might find helpful uh, when they're trying to assess whether or not to add, you know, tomorrow's new theme to their existing portfolio. All right. So how do they do that? Uh, so three simple things, really. Number one is, you know, is the theme reliable or not? And as you rightly said up front, you know, the latest themes this year around inflation, unclear if that's reliable or not. Uh, the commodity super cycle, um, iron ore price falling 50% in six months doesn't really fit with that. Uh, you know, a great theme is really reliable. You can take it to the bank, um, you know, aging populations and, and driving demand for healthcare. That is absolutely certain. Um, the shift in retail uh, behaviours to dis uh, digital channels, uh, there's no question about that. So that's number one, how reliable is it? Number two, how likely will you actually make money in this theme? And there's a couple of parts to this. So say you go and buy a, a, a thematic ETF and there are plenty out there today on, on the latest and greatest theme that you think is wonderful. Even if that is true, you've then got to ask yourself the question, uh, are the underlying stocks held in that ETF related to the theme in question, number one, and then number two, uh, are those businesses undervalued on a standalone basis? And that's not an easy question to answer. Uh, and then the third thing you've got to think about is, you know, is the new theme that you find better than the existing themes that you already own in your portfolio? Because, you know, we humans often think that more is always better, but if each incremental theme that you're adding to your portfolio is maybe not as good as the ones you already own today, then all you're doing is diluting returns. So what we often observe is actually that, you know, some of the older sort of more reliable themes can are actually more valuable than some of the new whiz bang themes that we discover. Uh, and, you know, they can often spawn new iterations that, uh, you know, go under underappreciated in the market for quite mm. some time. So uh, on that basis, then, Andrew, I mean, certainly you're saying perhaps look at those longer term themes. You've got to invest long as a result. But um, is it worthwhile perhaps splitting your portfolio into maximising those themes that are playing out in a short term level to those that are playing long term? Well, you raise an interesting point around how you actually define a theme. Um, I mean, we always think of themes as multi-year, multi-decade, like really long-term stuff. And, and the nature of those sorts of themes is that they move slowly but surely. Um, now, we live in a sort of a world of, um, you know, instant gratification and, and no one has a lot of patience these days. So watching a 10 or 20 year theme play out can be rather boring. Um, but, you know, shorter term themes, I mean, we would call them cycles, uh, not not really themes. Mm. So, I mean, you know, so, something like the shift in retail to e-commerce, uh, I mean, that has already been around for decades. And, and you know, a lot of your viewers would probably roll your eyes, roll their eyes at, at such an idea, except that we're still only, you know, less than 20 percent penetrated in the US and less than 25 percent penetrated in China. But that theme is absolutely reliable. Um, you don't have to wonder, you know, it's not like inflation, will it or won't it, or the commodities, will, will they or won't they? Uh, it is absolutely reliable. Um, and even in that theme, uh, it, it has spawned and continues to spawn uh, a number of new sort of uh, iterations that remain undervalued today.